Neither Dr. Gebhardt nor Constable Oliver can keep up with Legrand's pace, but in contrast to good old Robert, the doctor doesn't let himself get roped in for the long haul. I wonder what would happen if Legrand dragged him out of bed for another investigation. Dr. Gebhardt locked the door, and until I have good reason, I won't wake him up. Something tells me that he wouldn't be amused. Come in. Constable. About the bullet, here it is. Excellent. Give it to me. As I suspected. A 7.65 Parabellum Luger. Don't you want to examine it in more detail? When I have time. For now, though. We can assume that we have the murder weapon. There can't be too many antique Luger 08 pistols on board. May I take a look at the Baroness's cabin? We already searched it thoroughly. Sure. But what about now, by daylight? Yes, yes, fine, it can't hurt. Here, take this with you. Thanks. I'll let you know if I find anything important. But only then, please. I'm very busy. Of course. About the tranquilizer. Do you know how you wound up with the glass? Not yet. Then you should stop wasting my time and get back to work. I'll be in touch if I uncover more clues. Very well. These little sachets contain the evidence we've collected. At least, the evidence that fits in little sachets. Lady Westmacott seems to be an early bird, but maybe that's just because of all the excitement. I saw a twinkle in her eye on the train. She's eager to be part of a real detective story. Lady Westmacott, already on your f Oh. Constable, don't you think before you speak? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No time for chit-chat. What have you found out? We're still working on the case. Actually, I have a couple of questions for you. Please, go ahead. What did you think of our adventure on the train? An extraordinary story, isn't it? I'm glad that you were able to prove yourself, Mr. Zellner. Hopefully not for the last time. I'm glad that everything ended well. I want to thank you sincerely for taking care of Matthew. I can't bear to think about something happening to him. It all worked out in the end. 
Do you think that the thief from the train and the murderer are the same person? I think the new Raven is capable of anything. Legrand believes there is no new Raven. He thinks that the old one has returned. He said that. Do you think it's possible? Everyone thinks he's dead. As a dramatist, the return of the Raven would certainly be delightful. A legend comes back from the grave for one last job. It's quite romantic. At the same time, though, I'd be disappointed. Why is that? I followed the Raven's career closely. There weren't many burglars with such character and charm. His burglaries were clever and entertaining, but he was sloppy in London. He almost got caught, and I'll never forgive him for the affair on the train. No, I would much rather that the Raven stayed dead and had nothing to do with the burglary or the murder. What do you think? Who is our suspect? Everyone, or almost everyone. Everyone on board is physically capable of shooting someone, but who has the dark desire to take the life of a defenseless person? One cannot read minds. And one should not try. You have to collect evidence, traces, clues. That's what will lead us to the killer. It won't be like a bad crime novel, in which they introduce a new character shortly before the end who, surprise, surprise, is also the murderer. Murderers leave evidence. They're nervous or unnaturally relaxed. They have to adjust constantly. And because of that, they make mistakes. This is your chance, Constable. If you find the mistake, you'll find your murderer. Have you noticed anything related to the murder? Unfortunately not. I was already in my cabin and missed all the commotion. Damnable old age. You're telling me. Oh, you're still young. At my age, you have to expect that you won't experience much anymore. And although I've written about murder so many times, I've never actually witnessed one. How exciting. I doubt everyone is so relaxed in such a situation. Heartless is the word you're searching for, right, Constable? I certainly didn't want the Baroness to be murdered, but if I can't undo it, then I might as well enjoy it. What do you think of Inspector Legrand? He seems to be as skilled as everyone says. Intelligent, focused. I had a chat with him yesterday, and he impressed me, but there's something haunted in his eyes. I don't think he ever really stopped hunting the raven. Catching the raven made him famous. What if he actually shot the wrong person? Unjustified fame bothers people, the good ones at least. And you think he's one of the good ones? Anyone who tries so hard to tear down his own memorial must be honorable. <laughs> or insane. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zelna. Of course. Captain De Conti is sitting at the bar again. He gave me the glass of champagne last night. Hello, Captain De Conti. Hey, Constable Zelna. You're back on your feet again. Glad to see you. What was your experience of last night? Oh, terrible. Dinner was fantastic. Everyone was excited about having a pleasant drink under the stars. And then this. You were in the saloon all night long. Yes, the captain. I have to care for my passengers. After you and the others rushed out, I tried to maintain a festive atmosphere. <laughs> but when the alarm it goes off, I lose the battle. <laughs> Did everyone drink from the same bottle of champagne last night? There was more than one bottle, if that's what you mean. There were quite a few guests, and the event lasted several hours. The last bottle of champagne, the one the Baroness drank from, did anyone else drink from it? Certainly. We have reason to believe that the champagne was drugged. Incredible. But wouldn't that have made everyone drowsy? Not if it was only the Baroness's glass that was drugged. I see. That's possible. On a night like that, many glasses are filled and emptied. There are several stewards, many guests. 
No one keeps track of every glass and every bottle. A few drops in a glass? Yes, it's certainly possible. The glass you handed me last night, where did you get it? Ah, uh, I understand. You think your glass was poisoned as well? Did you pour it yourself? No. I saw that you weren't doing so well and wanted to rescue the situation. I took the first available glass and I give it to you. Was it on the table? No, I hurry over to you, together with Dr. Gebhardt, who... Of course, he had the glass in his hand. He was looking around for a place to set it down, so that he could examine you. I took it from him. And gave it to me. I'd like to apologize for that, but you look so worse for the wear, and I just wanted to comfort you. I didn't think of looking for a new glass for you. Hmm. So the doctor had the drugged glass in his hand. How was the Baroness? She really surprised me. After she was so unapproachable at the reception and didn't show her face for the entire afternoon, I was afraid she was one of the bores and bourgeoisie. But then she arrived in the early evening in the best of moods. Already had a few, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Did she say anything to you? She asked me where Legrand's cabin was. I told her, then invited her to come for drinks in the evening. I said it would be great fun. The whole ship will be there, and you don't want to miss that, I told her. And then? She seemed to like the idea. She smiled, and then left again for a few minutes. Then she came back and seemed very happy. We drank a toast to life. But at some point, she didn't feel well anymore? She overdid it a bit. She suddenly started to swoon and almost spilled her drink. I asked her if she wanted to rest for a moment in her cabin. At first, she didn't want to. She definitely wanted to stay in the saloon. But then she realized that she really did need to lie down. We left together. You know the rest of the story. What can you tell me about the passengers? Oh, not that much, I'm afraid. I wanted to get to know them properly at the reception. In most cases, I just shook hands with them as they boarded the ship. There are a few regulars on board, and after dinner, I had a conversation with Mr. Kreutzer, a talented violinist, and Lady Westmacott. But you already know them from the train. It seems like there aren't that many passengers on board. These bloody airplanes are making our lives miserable. Can you imagine? Grown men prefer to jam themselves into a narrow metal coffins instead of enjoying the fresh sea air on a ship. It's all about saving time. It shouldn't be about how much time it takes to get from A to B, but about how you spend that time. What you experience on the journey, that's what it's about. Is it possible to find out where the alarm was set off? I'm afraid not. There are alarms all over the ship. I saw that they're sealed. Can't we just check whether the seal is broken? I'm afraid they're gonna be missing on a lot of alarms. You know, this is an old ship, and over the years... So, you're saying that the alarms haven't been regularly maintained? I'll inform the crew immediately, of course. Of course. I'll get back to my investigations now. Ciao, Constable. The alcoholic drinks and everything that goes with them is top-notch on this ship. Fresh ice and tongs. Hmm. They could be useful. Constable Zelda, what is the meaning of this? Are even the police light-fingered nowadays?
I need this tool for a criminal investigation. Well, why didn't you say so? But bring the tongs back when you're done. Otherwise, I'll have cold fingers all day. <laughs> Captain De Conti is sitting at the bar again. He gave me the glass. ship's bridge. Two men, one of them navigating. I get the impression that the officers keep things running. It seems like the captain concentrates on the passengers and the bar. There's dirt piled up in the corner. Down below where the passengers are, the ship is pretty clean. But the crew doesn't seem to care as much up here. I better let the men do their work. If one of them had detected something yesterday, he'd already have informed the Grand or the Captain.
I completely forgot to ask Legrand for permission to search the cabin. I'll do so when I deliver him the bullet from the doctor. This is the first murder scene I've ever set foot in. The door frame was damaged when Dr. Gebhardt kicked it in. The real question is, why was the door locked in the first place? Hmm. Assuming the murderer isn't a magician, and the Baroness locked the door herself before she went to bed, the murderer couldn't have left the cabin through the door. So, the murderer must have still been in here when Dr. Gebhardt kicked the door in. Which is unlikely because someone would have seen him, or he found another way out of the cabin. The most unportable portmanteau I've ever seen. The most unportable. Another alarm. It was tripped at some point. The seal is broken. But there's no way of telling whether it happened yesterday or five years ago. A portable bar is more like it. Must be hard work transporting this big heavy thing halfway around the globe. And the Baroness was lucky that the other freight cars were only lightly damaged by the explosion. An impressive piece, but I don't think it'll get me anywhere with the murder investigations. Hmm. The notepad has the ship's emblem on it. I suppose all the first class cabins have them. It says, Inspector, be in the saloon at 10 p.m. There is a murderer on board and I will expose him. B. The Baroness seems to have known the murderer. And that means that the Raven can't be the murderer. He never killed anybody. Legrand probably never got the message, otherwise he'd have said something. The mannequin surely came with the cabin. A mannequin for the Baroness's clothes would have a more generous figure. Sunflowers. By Van Gogh, I presume. He liked to paint that sort of thing. Can't be an original. They cost thousands of francs. Big, ugly, and impractical vase. If it had a wider opening, one could at least use it as an umbrella stand. 
Hmm. Can't see anything. Wow, heavier than it looks. Aha! Why were the down feathers tossed in the vase? Or is there anything else in there? Why were the down feathers... Or there may be something else in the vase, but the neck is too narrow to reach in with my hand. Why were the down feathers... There may be something else in the vase, but the neck is too narrow. Could work. There's something in there. Ah. Someone stuffed this in the vase. <whistles> Looks like it's been used to muffle a gunshot. If this isn't an important discovery, I don't know what is. Legrand, here I come. The portholes face the side deck. If someone climbed out of the cabin through a porthole, Legrand and I would have seen them. Hmm. The portholes are locked. One cannot open or close them from outside. It's the same problem as with the door. If someone left the cabin through the porthole, how did they lock it? And the Baroness wasn't shot from outside. The doctor said she was shot at close range. Apparently, the Baroness didn't have time to unpack her bags. Or rather, didn't have time to tell her butler to unpack them for her. Hmm, sifting through all that would take ages. But here, the Baroness's handbag. Aha! A small leather-bound book. 1964 is engraved on it. This must be the Baroness's diary. Let's see. Yes, it's a diary, all right. Difficult to read. No entry from yesterday. A brief, sober description of what she's done recently. Met Morris, arranged benefit concert for renovation of Louvre Southeastern Wing, Times photo shoot for Eye of Sphinx, BM, poor excuse for photographer, too fidgety, and so on. Hmm, this entry looks strange. The handwriting is shaky. Difficult to read. Dreamt of Bobby. Yesterday would have been his birthday. Next week, Jay's. Hmm. The Baroness was a very busy woman. And it looks like she had to cope with loss. She writes about Bobby and Jay. Neither seem to be alive anymore. Almost every family lost loved ones in the war. Maybe hers as well. The Baroness was a very big... She writes almost... I'll leave it there. I don't have time to read all of it. Cosmetics, a handkerchief, a spectacles case. Nothing special. Nothing special, although it seems like one of the feathers was scorched at the top, literally burnt. I'd better take it with me.
Something's under there. More feathers. And they're singed as well. I'll put some with the others. There's still blood on the mattress. The sheet and the blanket have already been removed. To analyze them, I suppose. Hmm, a tape recorder. Must go with the built-in speakers. Probably part of the cabin's furnishings. The tape recorder is older than the hills, but it was once very expensive. Top of the range. And it doesn't come cheap. Hmm, strange. There's only one reel. And it's the wrong one. No. No sign of the original reel. A reel made by Zeibling. I know the brand. Zeibling's tapes can be overwritten many times without losing quality. They're used in offices so that executives can record messages for the secretaries on the same tape over and over again. But they're not good for much else. They're robust, but they don't offer much in terms of sound quality. A reel made by Zeibling. Zeibling, they use, but they're not. Hmm, nothing. The blood spot is the only sign that someone committed a crime in here. Hmm, somehow... That's odd. The blood is so... red. Shouldn't it gradually darken in the air? Turn brown? The unusual color of the blood could be something that Legrand and Dr. Gebhardt missed last night. All cats are gray in the dark. As the saying goes, I should take a sample. Small, even stones. The unusual. There should be a ventilation shaft behind the hatch. Usually a good way to break in and out undetected. But we run a ship. The ventilation shafts are very small here. I can't say why, and it seems impossible, but something tells me that the murderer entered and left the cabin through the door. The only question is how. The unusual color of the blood. All cats are gray in the dark, as the saying goes. I should take a sample.
What a discovery. This pillow was obviously used to muffle a shot. Legrand, here I come. The Seibling brand reel from the Baroness's cabin, the tape that came on it, and the reel that belongs to the player are both gone. The message from the desk of the Baroness says, Inspector, be in the saloon at 10 p.m. There is a murderer on board, and I will expose him. B. The metal of the tongs feels cold from the smooth handle all the way to the tips. Some of the down feathers I found in the vase are singed. The Baroness's butler looks like he didn't get much sleep. I would describe his facial expression as worried. Hello, Mr. Inch. Oh, Constable, hello. You look the worse for wear. It must be terrible for you. Quite terrible. No one will hire me now. Uh, excuse me? My mistress was murdered. Would you hire a butler who's been mixed up in a murder? But if it turns out that you're not guilty... If? But what? If not, who else would they blame? There are no gardeners on this ship. <laughs> I understand your problem. Under these circumstances, I'm sure you'd answer some questions that could help clear your name, wouldn't you? Of course. How long had you worked for the Baroness? Six months, sir. Only six months? I always thought that butlers stayed with their employers for decades. Those decades have to start at some point, Constable. Her former butler wasn't able to fulfill his duties any longer. Gout, sir. I understand. I took on his duties and hoped for a secure position for the next 20 years. The Baroness seemed to be pretty drunk the last time I saw her. Is that so? Does that surprise you? Did the Baroness not drink? Oh, yes, she drank. It was no secret. I understand. How serious was her habit? Serious enough, sir. Was she under any medical supervision? Certainly not, sir. She adamantly refused to see a doctor. Like so many elderly women, she had a distinct aversion to hospitals and the like. May I ask what happened to your arm? A souvenir from the war, sir. Doesn't it hinder your work? Yes, sir. Obviously. I didn't mean to offend you. The Baroness had a soft spot for disabled veterans. I think she'd been through a lot herself. Did you notice anything suspicious last night? No, sir. After the Baroness went to the saloon, I went to the forecastle. I was there until the alarm went off. I went to the side deck and arrived shortly after Professor Lucian and Miss Miller. We found you and Inspector Legrand there. You were unconscious, and the inspector asked us to take care of you. You said you were on the forecastle. It sounded like the Baroness let you have the rest of the night off. Not entirely, sir. One of the crew informed me that the Baroness wanted to be roused at quarter to ten. Right. Why was that? I suppose that she wanted to toast the success of the journey with the captain and the other passengers. She hadn't intended to take a nap, then? That was not her way, sir. She had a lot of... Spirit, shall we say, when it came to social engagements and a glass or two of champagne. The gunshot just before the alarm went off. Did you hear it from the folks, sir? No, just the alarm, sir. 
The Baroness's cabin seems to have been ransacked. Indeed, sir, by the Baroness herself. Really? She was searching for something the entire afternoon. And did she find it? I think she did, sir, yes. She was in high spirits when she finally left her cabin. You wouldn't happen to know what she was looking for, would you? I'm afraid not. Would you describe the Baroness as orderly? Uh, well, she... She always had a lot of responsibilities, sir. That doesn't answer my question. She used to take a lot of luggage on journeys, and I helped her keep track of it as best I could. She was always very angry when she couldn't find something. What about the photos and the documents I saw in her cabin? I really don't know. They were out of bounds to me, sir. Memories from the war, I'd say. They meant a lot to her. I think that's all for now. Please, sir, find the murderer. You have to clear me of all suspicion. I completely forgot to ask I'll do The Baroness's butler looks like he didn't get much sleep. A singed pillowcase is proof that there must have been a second gunshot. In Vector? Don't you knock? I uh, didn't realize I'm Really? I... I'm not getting anywhere. I'm going to question each passenger individually. Anyone without an airtight alibi will be checked for gunshot residue. But, Inspector... People trip up when you put pressure on them, Constable Zellner. The Raven is nervous. He's changed his methodology and become a murderer. I'll see it in his eyes. After you. But Inspector Legrand.
We have no proof that the Raven and the murderer are the same person. You may not know it, but I do. I will catch him with or without your help. I don't believe it. What's gotten into him? Oh, well. It makes no sense to tell him about my theories if his opinion is already set. I need evidence. Or better yet, the murderer. I also need his lab if I'm going to get anywhere. I need to get in there somehow. And I really need to talk to the stowaway. He may have information, and the inspector will just ignore him since he's too young to be the raven. The Grand locked the door. The lock isn't especially secure. If I had a wire or something like that, I could probably pick it. I need something to open the lock. The key would be best, but a wire would do. Dr. Gebhardt locked the door, and until I have good reason, something... The death of his mistress doesn't really bother Inch. He's only worried about his own future. The death of his mistress... Mr. Kreutzer, come on, you have to give me a bit more. You're the only one who was on the train and who has no alibi for last night. As I said, I was in my cabin. Are you sure that it was your cabin and not the Baroness's? Legrand will question the guests, one after another. But if he doesn't get the answers that he wants to hear, it could become unpleasant for them. Lady Westmacott, may I bother you for a moment? By all means, Mr. Zellner. How is the questioning going? Are you implying that I'm an eavesdropper? The inspector is placing a lot of pressure on our dear Mr. Kreutzer. He's the only one who was on the train and who doesn't have an alibi for last night. Perhaps. But him? A murderer? I know people like him. He doesn't have enough backbone to kill someone in cold blood and remain so calm. He'd turn it into a drama and then a farce, drink himself insensible and then, railing at fate, pitch himself into the sea. Forget him. Legrand is wasting his time. Mr. Kreutzer just happens to be a perfect fit for the inspector's image of the raven. Athletic, cultured, moves among the rich and famous. 
I'll eat his violin if he's the raven or the murderer. I have to be going, Lady Westmacott. Please keep me informed, Constable Zelda. Of course. Mmm. English ham and eggs. One advantage on an international trip is the international breakfast. Many of my fellow countrymen think it's outrageous to eat fried bacon, sausages, or, or anything heavy for breakfast. I, on the other hand, think ham and eggs are the only worthwhile contribution the English have made to international cuisine. It's not fair. There's a magnificent buffet, but I don't have an appetite. Maybe a side effect of the tranquilizer. It's not fair. There's a magnif... Excellent. Ah, that's just what I needed. Coffee is not bad at all, but one cup is enough. Mr. Kreutzer clearly feels uneasy, but does Legrand actually think he's the raven? Mr. Kreutzer clearly... Legrand is absorbed in the interrogation. He still seems pretty annoyed. The violinist seems to be bearing the brunt of it. Captain De Conti seems old and tired. 
The price you pay for a life like his, I suppose. Captain De Conti seems... I'm sure Captain De Conti wouldn't mind a chat, but I don't think he can help me at the moment. Miss Mayer seems to have found an opportunity to do nothing. Miss Mayer seems to have found an opportunity to do nothing. <laughs> Hello, Miss Mayers. Hello, Mr. Uh, Constable Zelda. Did you hear or see anything suspicious last night? No, I didn't feel very well last night. I went to bed early. So, you're feeling better this morning? Thanks for asking. Do you think it's appropriate to go sunbathing in a situation like this? What situation? A woman was murdered last night. If refusing to sunbathe could bring the dead back to life, I'd go back to my cabin immediately. I'm sure your parents are truly sorry that they can't be with you at this difficult time. Maybe. But I'm not a little girl anymore. And thinking about my fiancé keeps me going. You... you're engaged? Yes. My boyfriend and I got engaged right before the trip. I want to surprise my parents, especially my dad. I'm sure he'll be very surprised. But what will you do if your father doesn't agree to the engagement? What choice does he have? when he put me on this boat full of thieves and murderers in the first place. Charming. Enjoy the sun, Miss Mayers. And don't let us disturb you. If you're trying to make me feel guilty, Constable, it's not working. Miss Mayers seems to have found an opportunity. Miss Mayers doesn't really seem to be much help in my investigations. She's probably too busy thinking about her... fiancé. Matt is keeping himself busy with that strange game. He seems to be okay again, but I think he'd be running around all over the place if he'd really come to terms with what happened on the train. Matt is keeping himself busy with that strange game. He but I think he... Hello there, partner. Hi. Are you all right? Uh-huh. Have you recovered from our adventure? Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Zellner? Mm hmm What's going on? What do you mean? Everybody's acting so strange, and there's tape across that door. I saw that in a movie once. You don't have to be worried. 
Is it about the man from the train? It might be about the thief, yes. Haven't you caught him yet? I'm working on it. Okay. I heard you and your mom used to argue a lot. We did. Everything was bad. The house, the school, the other kids. We didn't have much money, and I was always alone. You do know that your mother would love to have been with you, don't you? She had to go out to work to earn money. She wouldn't have had to if Dad were still around. Mm. And how do you get along with her now? I'm always happy when we do something together on vacation. She has more time for me now, and I like my boarding school. I have lots of friends, and the teachers aren't so bad. Your mother and Professor Lucien seem to be on very good terms with each other. Mm. Don't you like him? Don't know. He seems to be very nice. I guess. Lady Westmacott is all by herself in the saloon. Maybe you'd like to visit her later. Sure. The lady tells exciting stories. I know. She's my favorite writer. She told me that it's not much fun to write detective novels. She'd rather write something else, but her fans always want the same thing. They made her rich and famous. I told her to write what she wants to write. If it's good, someone will buy it. And if not, at least she had fun writing it. Then she smiled and nodded. She said it was a good idea. What are you playing there? I'm playing shuffleboard. At least I'm trying to. Never played it before. It's easy. Professor Lucien explained it to me. And who won? We didn't play. You didn't want to play with him, did you? Do you want to play a game with me? Sure. I think you'll have to explain the rules to me first. Okay. You play with the blue pucks and I play with the red ones. You have to push the pucks with this stick into the zone over there and score as many points as possible. Sounds easy. How many pucks do I have? Six. Now here comes the kicker. First it's your turn, then mine, and so on. But everyone is allowed to shoot the other person's pucks out of the zone. Then let's get started. Oh yeah. What are we playing for? Uh, I thought we'd just play for fun. That's boring. We have to bet something. Otherwise it isn't fun. You English people. So I'll bet my brand new slingshot. And you? I don't want to gamble. How about... Ice Cream in Cairo. Okay. If I win, I get the slingshot. If I lose, I get an ice cream in Cairo. Hey! Never try to cheat Matt Miller. So, what do you say? Ice cream versus slingshot? Mm, all right. Let the games begin.
That's it. Oh, man. The athlete wins the day. One more time. No, that's enough for me. All right. Here. Are you sure? Gambling debts are debts of honor. I'll give it back to you when I don't need it anymore, okay? Okay, but make sure my mom doesn't catch you with it. She thinks it's dangerous. Matt is keeping him, but I think I'll let him play for now. Miss Miller and the professor are talking intensely. She seems pretty relaxed, by her standards. Miss Miller and the professor... Miss Miller... Miss Miller... Good morning, Miss Miller. Professor Lucien. Constable Zellner, how are you? I, I heard you passed out last night. Well, not quite. I was poisoned. Oh. That wretch! Who do you mean by that wretch? That stowaway. That new raven. The young man can't be the murderer. Constable Oliver had already apprehended him when the shot was fired. You mean... Whoever killed the Baroness is still on the loose. I think I should take my leave. I I'd like to rest for a while. One last question, Professor. The safe in Legrand's cabin can only be opened with three keys. Am I right? That's correct. We sent the first to Monsieur Mokhtar of the Egyptian Museum via air freight. I have one, and the inspector has the other. But it was originally planned that someone else should carry the third key, right? You are well informed, Constable. Baroness von Trebitz should have had it. But then there were... concerns. And for that reason, Inspector Legrand took it himself. Was that his idea? Well, yes, you could say that. I want to go back to my cabin. I'll see you later, Mary. Oh, uh, of course. See you later. I... I didn't want to interrupt your conversation with Professor Lucien so abruptly. I, uh, I don't know what's wrong with him. Learning that there's still a burglar on board seemed to frighten him. He was so relaxed the whole time, and then... Hmm. And then, the stupid Swiss constable came by and made him anxious. Oh, I didn't mean that. No matter. I'm sure he'll calm down and come back soon enough. May I ask you a few questions? Of course. You and Professor Lucien seem to be having a lively conversation. Oh, yes. He's an expert in ancient Egyptian art and preeminent in hieroglyphic research. He's the head of the Egyptian department in the British Museum, you know. And he's going to open an exhibition at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Right. Uh, for the eye. They had planned on exhibiting both jewels together for the first time in decades, but 
That's not going to happen now, sadly. I think it's quite upsetting for him. We're working hard to ensure that at least one eye will be on display. I know. I'll ask Lady Westmacott if she'd like to participate in the opening of the exhibition. I think it would be good for her. And Professor Lucien will surely offer you a private tour. How was last night for you? It was awful. I was having a conversation with Edgar, uh, Professor Lucien, here on the forecastle. Then I wanted to look for the lady and went forward via the side deck. When I passed the Baroness's cabin, I heard a muffled scream. You heard a scream? Yes. I thought the Baroness probably had a fall. I went to the door and listened for a moment. Since I couldn't hear anything, I knocked on the door and asked whether she was all right. There was no answer. Interesting. And then? I, I didn't know what to do, so I tried to open the door. It was locked. I saw the Baroness's butler, Mr. Inch, on the forecastle. I thought he might have the key and went back. On the way, the Bobby crossed my path, and then Edgar, who wanted to check the safe. I explained the situation to him, and then the alarm went off. How did the scream sound? It was a short outcry, very frightened, as if someone had been startled. Was it a woman's voice? Yes, the voice was high. So it could have been a scream from the Baroness, possibly because she discovered someone in her cabin. Possibly. That person might have threatened her with a weapon, so that she wouldn't scream for help. Oh, God. He waited until the coast was clear. Oh, please, stop it, Mr. Zellner. The Baroness's butler said that he was on the forecastle as well? Yes, he was standing on the other side of the deck smoking a cigarette. Was he on the forecastle the whole time? Uh, I'm not sure. He was there, and later he was on the side deck with us. Oh, yeah, yes, he, he looked after you while you were unconscious. He unbuttoned your collar and held your head while the doctor checked you. But you can't say for certain whether he came from the forecastle with you and Professor Lucien, or afterwards. Well, no. But where else could he have come from? Did you report that to Inspector Legrand? Yes, last night. He was very interested and took a lot of notes. But I wanted to look for Lady Westmacott, and he let me go without further delay. He said that he'd take down my full statement today. I understand. Do you think the man from the train also killed the Baroness, Constable Zellner? I don't know yet. It's horrible. Explosions, thieves, murderers. This isn't the right place for a lady and a little boy. How's Matt? He seems happy enough. After all the commotion, he's already back to his old self again. But I haven't told him about the murder. That would be a bit too much for him. I think he's made of sterner stuff. I want to thank you again for what you did on the train. I wouldn't have known... Everything's fine. Think nothing of it. You're American, aren't you? That's correct. And you moved to England because of the job? I lived in England before. During the Second World War, I volunteered. I worked in a pharmacy on a U.S. base north of London. In a pharmacy? Interesting. Well, it was the war and everyone was sent where they could help best. Please, go on, Mrs. Miller. After the war, I studied music in London. I met my husband there. We married and went back to the States together. He was also American? No, English. But he said he had problems with his family, and he wanted to be as far from them as possible. And you gave up your studies for him? Well, yes, I did. Life as a single mother couldn't have been easy. It was pretty tough then. I worked from morning till night, and it was still only enough for the bare necessities. And I couldn't give Matt all the attention he needed. And then Lady Westmacott entered your life. It was like an angel appeared to me. She must have offered me the position out of pity. I had no experience as a carer. She made me a generous offer. I couldn't believe it. And she really adores Matt. She's offered him a good education, and now he has every opportunity in life. An almost unbelievable story. I'm still afraid that it's a dream and that I'll wake up one day. How does it feel to work for such a world-famous person? The work is very interesting and varied, and it pays well, too. You are very lucky that the lady offered the position to you. I just hope she won't change her mind one day. What would become of Matt's education then? I really make an effort to measure up to Lady Westmacott's expectations, 
but sometimes I feel like I fall short. Lady Westmacott couldn't ask for a better companion. I'm saving up as much money as I can all the same. I'd do anything so that Matt doesn't have to give up his new life. Lady Westmacott dropped a hint on the train that she killed her hero, Partout. What did she mean by that? Oh, she must have meant the manuscript. Manuscript? She always takes it with her. It's an unpublished Partout novel. I once asked her why she never published it. She said that according to her will, the novel's only to be published after her death. And in it, Partout will be killed? Maybe. I've never read it. No one has. You'd better ask her yourself. If you worked in a pharmacy, you would certainly know something about medicines and poisons. Everything is a potential poison, Constable. It depends on the dose. Have you ever heard of chloral hydrate? It's a tranquilizer, isn't it? I'm asking you. Lady Westmacott also asked questions like that, for her last novel. But since I've never wanted to kill anyone, I never bothered with things like strychnine and arsenic and all that. I could recommend something for a headache, a sore throat, or a rash. That's kind of you, but there's really no need. I'll be seeing you, Miss Miller. Constable? Good slingshot, drawing on the expert knowledge of generations of boarding school students. And combined with the stones, there are countless opportunities for making mischief. Maybe Miss Miller has found something of a soulmate in the archaeologist. Unfortunately, there's no guarantee that the two of them will end up together. People with low self-esteem tend to sabotage their own happiness. Maybe Miss Miller has found some people with low self-esteem. Inspector Legrand is questioning the first of the passengers in the saloon. And? It will be hours before he gets to the stowaway. And? We'll save time if I question him. We'd also save time if you stopped asking me the same things over and over again. I will not let you in. What time is it, by the way? Got an appointment? No, but I'm hungry. Go and get yourself something. I'll mind the door in the meantime. Aha. Uh -huh. You could bring me something, though. Go and get your food yourself. I have better things to do. Oh, yeah? Like unmasking a murderer? I'm sure you're up to it. Judging by your age and rank, you must have solved loads of spectacular cases in the past. No. I was sidelined and spent my days sitting on my behind. Does that sound familiar to you? The bottle should be full of water, unless the good constable happens to have a secret alcohol problem. No way to verify that. I can't get the bottle without him noticing. It may not seem like it, but Constable Oliver is actually a very... Ahem! <coughs> uh, what's the matter now? Did you... So, what do you want to eat? Oh, anything. An apple or something like that. There's ham and eggs in the saloon. Oh, can't touch them. Why not? Sergeant Mills. Mm hmm? He's responsible for the fitness of the unit, and he'll chew you out if he thinks you've packed on a few pounds. I see. Leave it with me. Yeah, thanks. 
I have to talk to the young fellow right away. Even though he was already under arrest at the time of the shot, he may have noticed something before. And what about the other gunshot? Could the second missing bullet from the murder weapon be stuck down there in one of the wooden crates? If I want to get into the cargo hold, I'll have to get rid of the constable first. He won't let me talk to our young friend. Let him play for now. The death of his mi- The death- Lady Westman, but maybe that's just because of all the I saw a twinkle in her. I'm sure Captain De Conti wouldn't mind a chat, but I don't think he can help me at the moment. It's not fair. There's Whatever Constable Oliver wants, he's getting ham and eggs. Just a pinch of salt for our friendly constable. Good. Constable Oliver. Huh? Ham and eggs, piping hot. I don't see anyone here who'd rebuke you. It was a hard night. Yeah, true. Oh, delicious. Oh. Mm. Just enough salt. <laughs> mm. Oh, that was.
was good of you. Cheers. You don't expect me to wash your dirty dishes as well, do you? No, of course not, Your Majesty. Oh, that was a proper meal and no mistake. Constable is quenching his thirst with a bottle of water. You'll have a problem when it's empty, but I can't wait that long. Constable Oliver is drinking the water he brought along. Without it, he'd get very thirsty. Constable Oliver... Constable... Constable is quenching his thirst with a bottle of water. You'll have a problem when it's empty, but I can't wait that long. I have even and could this if I want he won't. I'll let him play for now. <laughs> 